every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Yes. Father, we thank you so yes. much. You are so good to us. You've opened the eyes of our understanding. You have shown, shown yourself to us in your word. Yes. And we just praise you and thank you for it. Yes, we thank you for words that move heaven on the earth. And we're, we're more involved in these covenants than ever in our lives because of your goodness and your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray it, and to that name we ascribe all of the glory. Amen. Amen. The 145th Psalm in the Classic Amplified, verse 3, Great is the Lord and highly to be praised, and His greatness is so vast and deep as to be unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will med meditate. Men shall speak of the might of your tremendous and terrible or your awesome acts and of power, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth like a fountain the fame of your great and abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your rightness and justice. And the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, mm. slow to anger, abounding in mercy and loving kindness. The Lord is good to all and His tender mercies are over all His work, the entirety of things created. Amen. Some people think God's only good to people that are good to Him. That's not true. He's good to anybody that will receive it. Yes. Yes. Hey, when I was lost and undone and a sinner, and, and, and I lied for fun, man. Mm. I envisioned myself as this great actor. And, and then, and just, just, just go to a restaurant and just, this, this one girl that, that I knew, and, and this was when I was out on the West Coast trying to get discovered, you know. And so, we would go into a restaurant and we would be very British, you know, and we would order our meals. It was wonderful. And just lie like a dog. <laughs> but then it got over on me and I just lied all the time. Well, hey, he died for the ungodly and I qualified. And then I found out his mercy endured forever. That's the greatest verse I've found in the Bible. It thrilled me beyond measure. Mm -hmm. But He's good to all. His loving kindness, He's good to all. And His tender mercies to make known to the sons of men God's mighty deeds and the glorious majesty of His kingdom. He'll never be less good. No. It doesn't diminish. And then He will fulfill the desires of those who reverently and worshipfully fear Him. He will also hear the cry and He will save them. Well, now, wait a minute. That's first covenant. Mm -hmm. What about Second Covenant? Well, okay, I will do this. Open your iPads. That's still strange. <laughs> <laughs> I'm opening my Bible. I like paper. But this is Andy. So I come down to the book of Ephesians, and I go to the fifth chapter. Oh. Now the King James, we, we'll read it from the, from, the, from the King James, and it just simply says, Be followers, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us. But now wait a minute. That's kind of blind. The Greek word there is M-I-M-E-T-E-S. Mimic. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore imitators of God. Copy Him and follow His example as well, beloved children. Imitate their Father and walk in love. He is love. Yes. If you're going to be like Him, you're going to have to walk in love. And you can. You can be like Him. Sure. Sure. Expected. That's expected. Greater works will you do. 
he yes. said. That's his expectation mm -hmm. of you. And um, I'll show you this. Now, the greatness, the greater works. Mm -hmm. In Ephesians chapter 3, for this reason, seeing the greatness of his plan by which you are built together in Christ, I bow my knees before the Father. I bow my knees before the Father, mm -hmm. yeah. before the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, look. From for whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We're named after our Father. Mm. That Father of whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. May He grant you out of the rich treasury of His glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit Himself dwelling in your innermost being and personality. May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make His permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely in love. Glory to God that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. What is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth of it? Hey, mm -hmm. you, you, uh, that's all of it. Filled with the fullness of God. Yeah. Now, look, now look that you may have the power, strong, apprehend, and grasp the saints, devoted people that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves mm. the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge with, without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God, that you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God Himself. Now to Him who but in consequence of the action of His power that is at work within us, able to carry out His purpose and do super abundantly for over, far, over, and above all mm. that we dare ask or think. Wow. That's the greater works. Yes. Beyond what you can ask or think, according to what? The power. According to the power that works in us. Not out here, in Not us. In us. Oh, my. Uh, in, in Detroit. The, the word of knowledge has, has always functioned, even, even back before I knew what it was, it was there. I just didn't understand it much until I began to learn from Brother Hagin the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and so forth, and the difference, and so anyway. And, um, but the word of knowledge. And in a, in a, a deeper and higher revelation, the Spirit of God said through Brother Hagin, standing right in the pulpit, you will see it like you saw it run off on a television screen, and you'll be able to minister to the people. Mm -hmm. That's happened some. Mm -hmm. And I, I talked about it in Detroit. I was there in that church, and I saw a pair of lungs just, this was years ago, I just saw them, just this beautiful pair of pink lungs just hanging over the congregation. Mm. And I, I saw them. I mean, I saw it as real as, as I'm looking at that camera right there. I saw those lungs. And they just hung up there just pink and, and pretty, just as nice. So I just began to call out anything, anything wrong with your lungs. And it just started working all over the room. Mm. It came back when I was in Detroit this time. Praise God. And I, I began to see things, literally see them. And so... I, uh, I'd been standing up, you know, ministering and so forth. And just before I sat down, this pain hit me. <clears throat> and I, <sighs> now, I used to suffer terribly with the hemorrhoids. And that's what it, that's what it felt. And but when I sat down, it went away. And I thought, that's, uh, but then I just didn't pay any attention to it. 
And then people were giving their testimonies and so forth. I was sitting there and, and the word of the Lord came to me. He said, intercession. I was interceding for someone that had terrible hemorrhoids. Mm. And I picked up the pain. And while I was sitting there, I began to tap my teeth. Mm-hmm. And my, my, my teeth felt bad. Well, well, now then I recognized where I was in the spirit. So I just began to call out all kinds of teeth. And then all of a sudden right here, and I, I began to feel that. I put my hand up here, pain right in here, pain mm-hmm. right here. And, um, and it, and, uh, and it just went all over the place. Now that's the word of knowledge. Right. And it's, 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 it's the word being manifest. It's the goodness of yes. God. He loves you. He loves me and he hates pain. He bore our sicknesses. Now we're here in the book of Isaiah. Let, we're, we, and we'll go back here. Greg, do you want to read from the fifth chapter? But I want to go to 53. Sure, yeah. That's absolutely. And the, the old, um, in, in the King James Version, verse 3, He's despised and rejected of men, a man, man of sorrows and acquainted with, with grief. We, and so, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Well, he did do that. Mm-hmm. He did do that. But now, if you, in the Hebrew language, grief and sorrow is not even mentioned there. He bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. Mm-hmm. Just go to Strong's Concordance and, yeah, and look at it. Fine. He bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. He carried our pains. He carried mm. our pains. He carried our sickness and our pains. And then that was fulfilled in, uh, in the book of Matthew, the eighth chapter. And it says that. Uh, at, at Peter's house when he healed Peter's mother-in-law, and then and, and he was, they, was, they followed many followed him that were possessed of the devils. This was on the Sabbath, and at, at sundown, then they followed him out of the Sabbath where he had healed people. They followed him to Peter's house. He healed Peter's mother-in-law of a of a of a great fever, Luke said. So this was something on a, on an area like typhoid or something. She was she was really sick, really really sick. And he touched her hand and rebuked that fever and it left. She got up and fixed supper. And, and he said, and they brought many possessed with the devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and, and many uh, that were sick and he healed them all. Mm-hmm. He hates sickness. He hates pain. He is love and love just doesn't want pain on a child. No. He's moved with compassion. Yes. Concerning that because when the creation, we talked about it last week, heaven and earth, they're supposed to come together. Mm-hmm. And man, man is the one that's supposed to do that. Yes. That's why he didn't say it was good on the second day. Now read from that fifth chapter. Because man is made of the earth. Yes. And, and Jesus became made of the earth. Now that makes this fifth chapter of Isaiah, that, that really says something here. Well, in Isaiah chapter 5, let me find where I was going to... Uh, look, at, look at Isaiah chapter 5 and verse number 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. That's exactly what that rich young ruler did. I've done all of this. He's wise in his own eyes. That's right. And he's but- trying to grab him out of that. Don't call good evil, evil good. The thing that Jesus got the maddest out with the Pharisees is when they came up and he said, well, he ca- he's casting out devils by the devil. Yes. They're calling, oh, that's danger. I and mean. He started then talking about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bad place. Now, let me show you another verse, Psalm 34. 
let's tie this together here real quick. Psalm 34. Oh, there's so much good in here. Uh, well, look at verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. <laughs> Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there's no want to them that, there is no want mm -hmm. to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye little children, hearken unto me. I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. Verse 12. For what man is it that desireth life and love many days that he may see good? Mm. Now look at, the, look at the key to seeing good. Many days. Keep your, Keep tongue, your tongue from evil. evil. And thy lips from speaking guile. Now guile is deceit. Don't be deceptive about your speech. Verse 14. And, uh, boy, isn't that a bad looking car? Yeah. Well, no, I thought it was a good looking car. Mm -hmm. God is good. That's a good looking car. It's not a bad looking car. And I know, well, we're just kidding around. Listen, the yeah. devil doesn't kid around about your words. Ministering spirits, that's what he originally was. Yes. He, he, don't provoke, don't provoke the angel, the Lord said. I had my son one day said, he goes, Dad, that's sick. I'm like, stop saying that. Yeah, you can't say that. Don't say that. You can't say that. No, that means it's good. Don't no. do that. No. Look at the very. Now, here's here's yeah. the thing. If that's your car and you say, Psh, poor, that is a sick car and that you have cursed your car. Yes. And the devil will see to it that it's a sick car. That thing won't run right. It, it'll, it'll always have something wrong with it because he will whip you with a dictionary. Mm -hmm. he, is a, he is a legalist and, and he knows that words are the most powerful things on this earth. Words got him into trouble. Mm -hmm. When Adam, the thing that God loved and it was all good when he saw Adam now calling her good. When he saw Adam starting to say things, that was his job in, in the garden is to replenish the earth, to speak right. things into existence. That's what he so was supposed to do. There's, there's a very interesting thing in Hebrew. Ish, man, isha, woman. And then there's another word that has the same spelling in it. It's esh. Esh means fire. Very close to yes. Ish and Asha. It depends on where you put the Yod and the Hay, which is part of Yod Hay Vav Hay. That's right. If the Yod and the Hay aren't there, it's fire. Well, we know what that can turn yes, into. Yes, sir. But if Ish and Asha have the Yod and the Hay in it, they have a perfect marriage. There's, there's, the fire is not in there. If God's in it, yes. then it's good. Yes. And so this next, this next verse. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Verse 14, the par from evil and do good. Oh, man, do good. That's not a suggestion. Seek peace, look at this, and pursue it. There you are again. Go after it. Hunt it down. Like we talked about last week in, in Thessalonians, it's, we're on a hunt. You know, I've, I've, I've been flying for so many years that that things uh, cross my mind. Um, the greatest, um, the greatest fighter plane in World War II was the P-51. Yeah, what does the P stand for? Pursuit. Pursuit. And that thing get after you. It was the fastest in the business. It had the longest range. It had the most firepower. It changed the air war in Europe. Yes, it did. With the bombers. Long yes, range bombers now had the, the <coughs> yes, little, they did. called them the little buddies, I think is what they said. Yeah, the little friends. Little friends with it. And most of those were the Tuskegee Airmen. I was about to say it. You stole my thunder. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they were the only, they were the only group for those that are not, the, the Tuskegee, uh, was the Tuskegee University in Alabama. Mm -hmm. And it was the first opportunity that the black man had an opportunity to fly. He'd been lied about. And there was an officer that falsified a report. He later got into really 
deep, deep trouble because of it, that the black man was not mentally capable of operating that kind of machinery, which is ludicrous. And so it started at, M at M Muskegee. And uh, anyway, they were the only group. They went from P-40s to P-51s. They were the only group when it came time to go to Berlin. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the young man that was flight commander, he was lead, lead bomber commander. And he held up his hand. He said, I have the right, do I not, to pick my escort. I'm going to Berlin and I have a right to pick my escort. They said, well, yes, you do. He said, I want the red tails. The red tails. Mm -hmm. The ski airmen. Because they don't leave the bombers. They, they don't run off and chase enemy airplanes. They stick with the bombers. They, the Tuskegee Airmen never lost a bomber. My God. That's, that's like the goodness of God, where he's, I'm with you in the valley of the shadow of death. I am with you. So many of those with young them. men were Christians. Mm. So many of them. Benjamin O. Davis was there, and he was a West Point graduate. And um, he knew he was called to do it. And he, uh, he stayed in West Point, even though no one there would speak to him or have anything to do with him. He just stayed anyway because God had called him to do it. And he said, we are, you're, he said, you're going to be trained. You're going to be trained so good. And uh, I remember I was in a meeting this was in the days of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. And, and a young man was giving his testimony. And he said, you know that I have to be, I have to be overqualified. I have to be mo more well-trained than anybody to have an equal chance at a job. And the Lord said, what does that hurt? I thought, yeah, yeah. You're just smarter than anybody here, and you're just better than anybody here, and that's that's all right, buddy. Just get smarter than everybody right. here. Glory to God. And you say we're out of time? Stay with it. How did we get to be out of time? <laughs> but we are. We are. Has this been good? Yes. Two weeks of good, the goodness of God. Yes. Well, give the Lord a praise. Yes. Come on, Jeremy, help us, son. Thank you, Papa. You know, God is good to all. His goodness is chasing after everybody. And we know that Jesus went about doing good and he healed them all. And we should be following him in healing and doing good as well. This August 2nd through the 7th, Kenneth Copeland Ministries will be at the Fort Worth Convention Center for our annual Southwest Believers Convention. Join us all week for some powerful and anointed teaching from the Word of God. Come be a part, August 2nd through the 7th, where the West begins and faith never stops. Register today at kcm.org slash events. Welcome to kcm.org, your study center for victory. Get information on what partnership means and take advantage of the resources provided just for you. Build your foundation in the Word with the Online Learning Center of Video Courses, Believer's Academy, Bible School from right where you are. Gain access to Kenneth Copeland's Partner Letter, each letter written to meet the everyday needs of our partners. Download free books from the Bonus Library with over 50 titles by the Copelands available to read on your phone, computer, or e-reader. KCM.org meets you where you are. 
Every Friday is offering day on the broadcast. And I want to read to you again from the book of Galatians chapter 6. Verse 6 says, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Now these verses go on to talk to us about the difference between sowing to the flesh and sowing to the spirit. When you sow to the flesh, you reap death. There's nothing in it. When you sow to the spirit, though, you reap from the spirit life. And that's what this opportunity is. When you've heard the word like you've heard it today and all this week, and for many of you for years on this broadcast, you have an opportunity to respond to the word that you've heard. And you go before the Lord and you say, Lord, how do you want me to respond to this? Is there something you want me to do, to say, to pray, or to sow into this ministry? And partners, those of you who are partners with ministry, with this ministry, you know what it means to have a faith assignment alongside Kenneth and Gloria Copeland to get this word out all over the world. And you also know what it's like to have a financial assignment alongside this ministry, to take this same word that you've heard and serve people all over the world with it. And when you sow, when you sow into the kingdom of God, just take this ministry, for example, when you sow into the outreaches of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, you are sowing to the spirit and you can expect to reap from the spirit life. There is life in it. And, and like I said, many of you watching, you're partners and you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've seen it over and over again, how your seed into this ministry has opened up a door of access for God to go to work in your life. You've seen it and you can testify of it. And listen, partners together with you, this ministry has sent the uncompromised word of God all over the world from the top to the bottom and all the way around the middle. And you are part of all of it. You're a part of every broadcast, every magazine. You're a part of the, the website, that platform that's going out all over the place, every social media post, every prayer call, every email, every teaching and resource, every event that takes place, you are a part of it. And as you sow your financial seed into KCM, what you're doing is connecting with a ministry that specializes in using their faith and teaching other people how to live by faith and walk by faith, how to talk and fight by faith. So Father, today in Jesus' name, we receive the giving of the people. We thank you for the partners that you've added to this ministry. We call them blessed in Jesus' name. And those new ones, Lord, that you're adding to this family, we receive them, we receive their seed, and most of all, you see it, you receive it, and you bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, tomorrow morning is healing school at the Southwest Believers Convention. Get in it, receive from God, and your life will be changed forever. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember that Jesus is Lord. Today's Believer's Voice of Victory was brought to you by the faithful partners and friends of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Go to kcm.org.uk to receive your free digital download of today's broadcast. 2021 is the year of the local church, a year of divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery.